Hello and welcome to the Inside the Orange podcast. First of all, I'd like to say thanks for everyone who listened to last week's episode with Meredith Bell. It was a great, great interview. If you have missed it, then there's a link in the description and show notes. So please make sure you have a look at it. My guest today is someone who influenced me in starting a podcast. When I was researching how to get Inside the Orange out into the world, I came across a, a, a podcast called World According to the Autistic Kid, hosted by Don Barso. So we've kind of encouraged each other's podcasts since I've come about doing the podcast, and we've now appeared on each other's show. Before we get into that, though, and the interview today, here's how you can get in touch with the podcast. To get in touch with the podcast, you can find us at insidetheorange.co.uk. You can email us at insidethisorange at gmail.com you can find us on twitter at orange watts orange w-h-a-t-s on instagram inside the orange on the inside the orange podcast facebook page or you can find me on linkedin it's richard stevens motivational speaker and creator of the inside the orange all these links will be available in the description and show notes so my guest today uh, was actually someone I researched when I was starting Inside the Orange. Um, he was a young lad. So when I was um, looking at Inside the Orange, it was about a business and it was about looking at how people could be better understood in business and having an autistic son, which was what it was based on. The idea was to kind of look at autism and kind of look at podcasting. And I found a podcast called The World According to the Autistic Kid. It's hosted by a young lad named Dom Barstow. He's here today. Dom, welcome yeah. to the Inside the Orange. How's your day so yeah, far? Thanks. Yeah, thanks for having me on. It's um, Yeah, it should be fun. Looking forward to it. Podcasts are like my favourite thing to record. So yeah, let's go. <laughs> Brilliant. No, thanks, bud. And we did a... a I, I came on your show recently, yeah. so we're now swapping roles. And I said to you during that episode how difficult it was being a guest. So now the shoe's on the other foot, Dom. You've got to be a guest for me. <laughs> How, how do you oh, think no. you're going to find that? Um, I'm not sure. I was a guest quite early on, but I went really into the swing of things of asking questions all the time. And uh, it feels weird. It's uh, <laughs> I'm used to leading the conversation and asking. And it, it, yeah, it's, um, I don't know. It's different. That's for sure. <laughs> Brilliant. So <laughs> let's go back to where I found you. So I found you. So as I said, a little bit in the brief bit there. I was looking at trying to get um, people understood in business and that's where the podcast came from. And someone said, go and do podcasts. And I thought, well, I don't know anything about podcasts. So um, a few out through algorithms, I stumbled across yours. So first and foremost, why did you start the podcast and why is it called The World According to the Autistic Kid? Uh, cool. Uh, first, I'd like to say that at least means the algorithm's working. That's nice. Um, and uh, I first started a podcast of I might have said it once or twice on my show, but it'll be like mid-episode, so I'm not sure if everybody knows this. Um, I started because at first it was about, I wanted to do a radio show because I like talking. <laughs> um, it's, it's that simple. I've got a lot to say. <laughs> and a radio show was expensive, if I'm honest. And I had listened to the odd episode of a podcast of interview shows. And that's not how my, my, my podcast didn't start as an interview show. It was just me and one of my mates just chatting, uh, or two of them can't really remember what the first episode were like now um and I started that and it was fun it was a podcast it's just like a podcast like an internet radio show basically and it's really fun um and it's called the world according to autistic kid because I've got autism I'd recently started talking about it more and I thought there's a brand in that and I like I didn't like when I, I'm not someone who tries to always say I'm autistic in every conversation but I do the people who do do that usually uh, jumping to conclusions quickly 
without getting it, everybody's voices heard. Um, and I wanted mine to be heard as well, so they could reach, obviously, a middle ground, see what's right. And I said that, and I was raising awareness, understanding all the buzzwords, I suppose, uh, is also a part of it. And I, I called it that because it is the world upon to me. I, in interviews, I always try and relate it back to me so I can understand the guest. So I was going to change it when I got an interview podcast format about a few episodes in because it didn't really make sense that I'm having a guest talk about their life and it's saying according to mine. Um, but because I, I always relate, it works and it raises understanding. It also, I, my biggest goal is to raise that, like we're the same but different kind of thing. Um, we're the same, we're both pe humans, we're both people, we're both we're the same in that sense. It's just we have different needs, but I think about us, everybody's different needs anyway. It's just we've got a name for that. Um, I'm saying we a lot as if I'm leading some sort of army or something. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we say it's just with the same but different like everybody else on the planet is how I'd put it. And yeah, I'm enjoying the show. It's fun. Is recording podcasts, so I've kept at it. <laughs> no, and, and, and I, I really like the point because, you, you know, I, I, and it's kind of very humbling to hear you say that the, it, you know, it's not about me. But, you know, I think what's really interesting is if you find someone interesting, it is still, according to you, you know, you're, yeah. you're kind of highlighting people and that's because you find them interesting. Surely that's, that's right. And that's kind yeah. of where you're going with that. Is that fair? Yeah, I'd say that's fair. There's been a few people who, if I was going for a niche, probably wouldn't have fallen in it but that's because my guests are that varied it's just because I find them interesting so yeah that makes sense yeah I'd go with that and I, I, I want to quickly say you've um interviewed um Anne Hegarty I think that was very yeah. very early on and that's you that's, know she, she's yeah. she's a, a an she, she has autism um and she she talks about it and she talks about the kind of um I saw something recently online about you know the kind of definitions and terminology that she won't accept and things like that for it is that you know is that something that drew you to her as well um so it was only my second ever interview i recorded was on Higgity, which is a weird fact <laughs> uh, the first interview was with no one famous it was just a family friend and it was about autism and uh, yeah she had it and she came on the show she was really nice and we talked a little bit afterwards through um text messenger or whatever we were using and yeah, that was another reason for getting on. Because when I first started doing interviews and turning into that, I wanted it just to be just about autism. But quite quickly on, I realised that that would be pretty boring for me. Maybe not for the guests and the audience, but for me it would be. And that's, that it's, if it's a hobby, it's meant to interest you as well. Um, so yeah, that was what originally drew. And yes, we were really nice. And I've not read about the terminology thing yet, because I usually read about everyone <laughs> that I've got. I've been listening to your episodes most recently, to be fair. Um, <laughs> enjoy them. Very kind of you to say. It's not, I must admit, please, Dom, I don't ask people to do it. <laughs> Let me just go. Oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but I've been listening. I've done the thing that I hate everyone does to me, and I've gone back listening to early ones first, which I hate when that happens to me, but you've got to. Yeah. <laughs> and they're, they're good. They're better than my first episodes. I've got to say that, because I didn't know what I was doing. Um, you are so kind, honestly. You know, <laughs> but I think we again we talked about this on your podcast. It's about building. It's it. You know, yeah. if, if you you're not going to be uh, Joe Rogan after one episode, it doesn't work like that. Yeah. You know, but it's about are you proud of the stuff that you put out, and are you proud of what you've done so far? Yeah. I, I'm extremely proud. It's um, I probably care more about how my podcast goes than what grades I'll get at the end of the year because it's exam year. And <laughs> I said that at first as a joke to someone but I genuinely think that because I prefer this like I would happily work a job that just gets me by as long as I have time to do something like this I enjoy mm. uh, in the future that's kind of my mindset on that and I'm enjoying it so yeah it's I'm extremely proud and want to keep working at it <laughs> yeah Which, absolutely absolutely no, brilliant. And again, you know, I, I'm, I'm thankful enough. I don't do this full time, but I'm thankful enough that I've got a job that is exactly that. It gives me the time to do what I need to do, which I enjoy. And I enjoy doing this. And this is why we do the Inside the Orange. You briefly mentioned about um, about school. So we've also had a chat recently about um, about education and you've had a kind of very um, open and honest assessment. Yeah. You believe that maybe 
you feel sometimes the schools with people with additional needs they kind of uh, and I, I they, they kind of give you the answers to the work is is could you want to yeah. elaborate on what we kind of spoke I, about with that so yeah we spoke about that for a bit i think it was on air it could have been in between because that happens a lot my show talk in between okay. and all that but i think that was on air um and it's something that i've seen more recently it may not happen in every school but um it definitely happens where I'm, and I think it happens in most, because I've been to a few, a, a few, three. Um, uh, <laughs> and it, what happens usually is, obviously, some people do need support. Uh, there's no dispute in that. And in my head, the support should be giving you the tools to get to the level of the rest of the class, or maybe higher if you want, up to you. But what it turns out to be is, because it's a job, and people are doing it because they're told to do it, even if they wanted to do it, and they're told how to do it. They end up giving them the answer. And when this happens, loads of, there's been loads of times where it's genuinely just been someone sat next to me telling, not me, but other people, that that's the answer. Because I've refused support in a way. The amount of times that I've been, like, I've been offered extra time in tests as well. I've not needed them, so I've not actually bothered saying yes or no to it. Um, but I've refused support like that as well when I was asked about it, because how they do it i think i've maybe had it once in a primary school and I, it is just telling you the answer which some people do need support so i'm not saying bashing anyone that does get it because otherwise they won't get the answer at all but luckily i can get the answer anyway it may take a bit longer but i can get it so i can i am in a position to be able to refuse support i feel like it's unfair for those who aren't that they get the support but they still aren't progressing like at all along with the rest of the class which isn't, isn't fair on them. Um, and when people in my school discuss it, they discuss it saying it's not fair on my them, so themselves, like, oh, it's not fair, they get the answers. But I think it's more not fair on the person that's getting given the answers because they're not going to learn anything at all. And they're still going to need the support for the whole time, which defeats the whole point, in my opinion, anyway. Um, yeah, that's... In a nutshell. No, 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 no. That's a really good answer. I mean, you know, I think this goes back to what you're saying about the same, but different, same with differences. You know, let, yeah. let's not yeah. just say we all need this certain way of doing it. And I mean, again, that's what I wanted to kind of do with the inside the origin. It isn't just a one size fits all kind of thing. It's you know, we need to kind of understand how people are learning. And I yeah. found that very refreshing when you spoke to me about that, about the education and things. I found it really kind of good that you know you, you're kind of talking about that and that's why i wanted to kind of talk about it today because it raises a really interesting point you know that you you have done you know yeah. let me decide for myself what do, what do i need you know and that, that's really good yeah so obviously gold medal thing you would want to do this forever but if you were if you were and even if you were doing this but found um employed to do it what would you want your employee uh, sorry employer to kind of do with that so if you were going to transition from education into work what what kind of what do you need your employer to kind of do to get to understand the best and get the best out of you i think it's the same as understanding everyone that employees don't really take into account when it's the same it's like this is something that is not one size fits all but that's the whole point the whole statement is one size don't fit all anyway and it's hard to say what employment's going to be so to go into specifics because, like, the future is kind of uncertain anyway. Hmm. But it is just uh, if I need something explained to me a bit more, then it may not be I need it explained to me a bit more. I just need you to say it again, but slowly so I can take it in. Like, the amount of times that's genuinely helped uh, <laughs> with someone else. Like, I ask a question in school, for example, about maths, and the teacher, obviously, they're trying to teach loads of people. Again, whenever I say these stuff, criticize it. Criticising the system, not the individuals. I need to make that kind of clear um, because sometimes it might not seem that. And because they're teaching a class, they have to whisk through it so they can get around to everyone. That doesn't happen. So I asked the person next to me, like, what have I done wrong? And they went and explained what they did. I went, oh, wait, is that, oh, yeah, exactly. That's what I needed to do because it, it was something in maths. Um, so I did that and I worked out. And if that's the same that I need, surely for an employer, that's like, what, five seconds of their life. Um, I'm sure that to make someone do a job better, I mean, I'd take that if I was employing people, five seconds and they do the job better. Um, it's it's a really yeah. interesting point. It's really, and it's it, it's a simple thing that I think does get overlooked so much. But I think there's also a part of it that people need to be able to ask for help as well. Would you think yeah. that's fair? Yeah, people do need to be able to ask for help, which to be fair, sometimes I fall guilty of not asking at all um, and just struggling, which is wrong, but it, yeah. 
Uh, <laughs> I probably need to change that. So maybe try and create an, a workplace where it, people are open to ask. I don't know exactly how you do that, but definitely look into that as what I'd tell them, employers as well. Uh, off the top of my head, I was like, I can't think of ways that would do that. <laughs> yeah, uh, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's fine. No, and again, it's just you know, it's kind of refreshing. You know, you do talk about education so well and where it needs to go. And again, you know, naturally that does become em employment. As I say, you're a young man, you will go into work, and you know, we we all want to go to work to be understood better, and that's why you're sitting yeah. on the inside the orange podcast because that's what we love talking yeah. about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. So, you will carry on. Okay, I was going to say, I've probably talked about school more than I should have on my podcast. It comes up a lot, so I try and keep myself open. Uh, I, people could, I just realised this the other day, people could find out which school I go to because they shared a news article about it. Um, so, I mean, if they, they, you'd think now they'd be trying the hardest not to do anything wrong to me, so I don't say it on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> this should be working better than it is for me. <laughs> I'm expecting a red carpet next time. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So with the podcast then, so uh, uh, a cheeky question you asked me, so I've got to ask it back. Have you got a favourite episode and who are your dream guests? Um, dream guests is probably, oh, is it easier? That's not, no. Um, but I'll go with episode then. Okay. I've, like, I like, I've not had a single episode that I've not enjoyed. There have been parts and episodes that I've kind of been thinking, well, this is a bit rubbish, isn't it? But for episodes of the whole, I've enjoyed them all, but that's not the answer you want. And I have got ones that are better than others. Like, I enjoy, I did this one with Cooking with Cody. They were on Russell Howard Hour getting promoted. Um, and he were really nice. And I enjoyed, and the wife went out halfway through, and he couldn't have cared less. He was happy to continue. Um, I did Rich Ganella drummer with Bon Jovi and Bruce Springsteen. He was really, really nice. I'd go with that, actually. I was, oh, no, Eclectic Beard Reactions, not all the most famous but he was such a nice guy as well i can't say yours because that'd be cheating um so because that would be just trying to get brownie points wouldn't it it so would not with other episodes um but yours was quite high on there though to be fair it's more recent i prefer the more recent ones uh so people can go listen to that oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah eclectic beard yours and rich canella they were oh. my top three and dream guest yeah uh, i need to get to that i can't decide between two um uh, well, three, but one of them doesn't speak English. Like, because I'm, I'm a Leeds fan, I'd love Marcel Bielsa. He doesn't speak English, so I'm not going to have him there yet. But the guy that's director of football for Leeds, Victor Orta, he seemed like such an interesting and passionate person at the club. Like, it, he'd be amazing. And anyone from Bon Jovi, they're my favourite music at the moment, so that'd be cool. Uh, yeah. But they're quite high up. Um, not going to happen anytime soon. <laughs> You, you never know. You never know. It's only, it takes one person to listen. Uh, you know, Mark, yeah. Uh, um, BLC, yeah, OK, maybe he's, uh, he's, he's English at the moment. He might, yeah, unless you can learn um, Argentinian, the, the language, you know. What, uh, what does he speak? Is it Spanish? I don't know. I don't know. Well, I'm going to fail miserably here. I, I don't want to say anything that might get me. <laughs> I, I, I don't want to say anything more. <laughs> yeah, I won't say anything more. Uh, yeah, well, but yeah. <laughs> So my next question naturally is where do you want the podcast to go? So is it that you're going to end up uh, interviewing uh, Bielsa and, and the director of uh, football at, at Leeds? Uh, that'd be great. But I, if you asked me when I started, I'd have had a proper clear vision of what I want to happen in the next few weeks. But I'm happy how it is. I'm not saying that I don't want to grow. Of course I do. But if it's did like it is forever, then I'd be fine with that. Um, but yeah, I'd like to grow, I suppose, and make, it better for everyone uh yeah just keep growing keep enjoying it and as long as i'm enjoying it i'll keep on doing it maybe earn some money off it one day but um that's not the highest of priorities at the moment <laughs> but that would be yeah i'll go with that growing and enjoying it and i think that's really important because you know watching and looking around you know the podcast universe if you want to call it that <laughs> Yeah. You know, you, you, every single kind of post you see um, and everything you kind of see social media wise comments, you could you only have to comment, uh, sorry, two or three comments down. And the first one, how do you monetize? How do you monetize? I'm like, well, oh. you, yeah, give it time. Do you know what I mean? These things yeah. do not just happen overnight, you know, and I think that's the, you, that's the expectation. Again, I think we spoke on your podcast that the uh, podcasts rarely get past eight episodes. Yeah. Because, People go, oh, I'm not making any money. It's not about that. What you said there, enjoyment, you know, yeah. actually seeing a growth is, is, is so important. But go on. So, 
one about they had one episode out and it did all right, I suppose. I can't remember the exact numbers. I remember thinking, eh, it did all right. And they, they were asking about monetization one episode in. They didn't even know if they were going to continue doing it. Um, and that you're probably going to lose more money than you make <laughs> unless you're Joe Rogan. <laughs> Wait, as long as you're enjoying it, that's fine. It's like playing football, for example. Most people lose loads of money with boots and kits and all that, but they're enjoying it, so it's fine. That's As long as you're enjoying it, go for it. No, as long as you're not going bankrupt as well, that's a good start. Don't go bankrupt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, yeah, absolutely. You know, you've got to take it, take it carefully. But you know, I mean, I've I've enjoyed. You know, I'm 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 only going into my third season now. As you're aware, you're a third season guest. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I just I just get such an enjoyment for doing it. And I think you know that's really good. And it's really again so refreshing to hear. That's why I wanted you on the podcast as well because it's so refreshing to hear such a kind of mature and again I, I I'm, I'm very conscious how I say it because I don't want to sit there as the older guy going oh well <laughs> great young lad you know it's not about that but it's, it is really refreshing to have that kind of mindset and it's a very it's a very encouraging mindset for you to have going forward to 100% you know and, and people listening will surely get that from hearing you yeah uh, thanks uh, yeah thanks for compliments I suppose what do you what, what do you say when you get compliments um uh, thanks <laughs> <laughs> that'll do i want to i want to bring up so you're sat here in the interview today as you were when you interviewed me in, a, in an england england shirt and we had yeah. a conversation uh ours was during the euros that we i came on yours was during the during yes. the european championships um before we knew the outcome you said to me <laughs> <laughs> before you before we knew the outcome you said to me how do you think you do and i said look i'm a hardened england fan over the years it breaks your heart and it beca- makes yeah. you so desensitive desensitized I can't even say it but it really does yeah it really makes it difficult to be an England supporter and you said do you think we can do it and I said I'd love to say yes how do you feel after the Euros do you are you proud of that England team straight after the Euros I was absolutely gutted but but I live in Scotland right (laughs) and relative to where I live we're doing pretty well um, I know a final of a Euros losing to Italy on penalties is not something to be disappointed in. Um, well, I suppose on penalties it is. I'm not saying a lottery is the wrong word. I hate when they say that because it is still skill. But it, it, of course I'm proud. That's great. I saw people campaign for Gareth Southgate to be sacked. You don't play the most entertaining football, but as long as it's getting results, I, I want a trophy soon. So um, 2022, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> yeah see see this is where this is where i could probably cause a bit of uh, conflict with listeners here so i had a conversation with a, a great friend of mine he listens to my podcast and i said the complete opposite of what you've just said for me it doesn't matter if we win if it gets the country as it did if it got the country together if it made you oh, feel yeah, yeah. proud and i'm not saying even you're all wrong or, or the guy no, no, yeah, I'm, I'm Absolutely. I've had some absolute debates with this guy. I go, what do you mean you don't believe that you should win something? Again, <laughs> I totally agree. You know, it'd be lovely to get a trophy, but I still think you're only champions for 30 seconds. Italy are now, I'm not European champions, they're now going to be defending European champions yeah. because it moves on. It moves on so quickly. But I think what it did as a nation until, you know, and again, I'm, I'm, I'm going to glaze over a little bit because I don't want to highlight any of the poor, poor supporters that we had in this country who decided yeah. to do things that they shouldn't be doing and yeah. who ruin our game because of stuff like that for their, for their views. And they, they, you know, that's not, that's not, shouldn't be in our game. But what those guys did, what those individuals did as a group of players brought this country together after a, a pandemic. It made us all love football. It made us all yeah. chat. Surely that's a win. That, that it, yeah, yeah, that is a win. It's, Probably worth more than a trophy, but because we don't have a trophy, I can't really say that yet without experiencing it. <laughs> so, um, good point, good point, you know. <laughs> but yeah, it is, it did make proud. Um, and I lived in Scotland, I never knew how much people had Italian blood in them. It's uh, <laughs> <laughs> they'll find it, they'll find it. <laughs> Some sort of like, uh, I don't know, maybe a hundred years ago, immigrants came in from it. Italy to I don't know it's just they're, they're all team Italian now <laughs> I, I, I I love the fact that we're having this conversation on, on my podcast so you've now isolated Scotland from listening to my podcast I'm so sorry <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. All, yeah. I, I need to do a disclaimer somewhere, Dom. All, all my all my guest views are their own. <laughs> <You know? laughs> oh yeah, I love Scotland. I'd love for them to do well. Oh. <laughs> no, yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. No, not at all. I lost a minor in Scotland, to be fair. So um, I don't know why I'm saying any of this. <laughs> <laughs> You um, we we had a little chat before we came on 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 air, and you you said yeah. um, one thing I want to get to again. It, a link to your, to the football was you you helping the the, the yes. young lads, young lads with voluntary coaching and things like that. Tell us a bit about that, and why is it so important to you? Okay, so um, before I need some quick backstory. Um, I want to go to coaching. That's my idea. That's what I do. I do it part time. Like I said, hopefully that'll give me enough money to be able to do this as well. Um, but that's what I want to do. I want to go into coaching. Um, I love football. Not exactly the greatest player skill-wise. <laughs> but I think I've got the right brain for football. So I've always wanted to go into coaching for that. And I was looking into how to do it um, at the start of the summer. Because coaching badges are 16. Referee badges are 16 in Scotland, 14 in England. So I'm in Scotland. If I went to England for a few weeks, maybe I could have done it. But I'm currently in Scotland. <laughs> So looking into volunteering, because I'm pretty sure you, you don't count as a coach, is what someone told me in 2016, so I get to count as a volunteer. That, that could be wrong, but that's what they've told me. The company don't, anyway. Uh, an active school is a charity. We, they were one of the couple of people that got a message. I sent a few messages to non-league lo local clubs as well. I sent a message to loads. Uh, and they answered, because they've got a young leaders programme as well, to get people to volunteer. So obviously, I was like, get in, I'm doing that. Because um, that's what I want to do. It's with small kids not exactly what I want to work with when I'm like, in 20 years time but it's definitely a start and it's it's fun it's not football that I do I do all sports I've done football the most and uh I started with football because oh, you got to choose when you start because it's a volunteer basis you're not getting paid you get to choose luckily um and because I knew football and it was my first session it'd probably be easiest to do football first and I find the kids hilarious Right, that is like one of my favourite parts. That some of them are gobby little annoying kids, as they will be. <laughs> very good restraint. Very good restraint. <laughs> uh, I, I didn't even mean to lead up to that. It was just I was calling them little and gobby, and then I realised where I could have gone with that. So I had to stop <laughs> there. But they are annoying. Um, <laughs> but the most of them are funny. They're gobby. Like this, my first few weeks was the week we lost to um, Italy. Mm. That was my first week. And the coaches were from, were they from the Luton area? I think they were from Luton area. That's what they said anyway. I'm not 100% sure, which won't help you as a Watford fan, will it? Well, I, you know, we, we had a chat before we come on about uh, unacceptable language, and you've just used the L word on my podcast. So. <laughs> <laughs> you have to bleep it off. I don't think they were Luton fans, but that was the area anyway. Okay. Uh, that's what I said. <laughs> and uh, the kids knew that, because I didn't speak at first. They're all... They were doing it at the coaches, so I didn't get bullied by seven-year-old. But the coaches got bullied by seven-year-olds. And my favourite moment was uh, when we were in a game inside. It was indoor football. We had to wear masks. They didn't because they get away with that. Um, and they'd been saying Mamma Mia the whole time, putting on rubbish Italian accents. And I will criticise them for it because that was annoying. <laughs> <laughs> and the front of the coaches decided to take a penalty because they were fed up with one of them. And they scored, and it was like absolutely amazing. And they put on the time lapse back, and they came up, "Mamma mia, that!" <laughs> and it was hilarious. I loved it. It was probably one of the best parts of coaching at all. And my favorite parts though, some of the kids they're just really nice, they like four, and they're like more polite than I am. It's amazing. One of my favorites was there for like a whole week. Everyone I was there, and he made it so much easier. Like if people were arguing, he'd be like, "Please don't do that." Oh, it was great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so it's fun. I've done football the most because uh, I enjoy it and it's easiest to coach because it's just kicking a ball. The only part I dislike is when it's glorified babysitting because <laughs> some kids don't want to be there, which isn't their fault. Uh, and sometimes it's not, I'm not saying it's the parents' fault. I'm just saying they could maybe find an activity that's better, but if they can't, fair enough. But yeah, it's fun. Good fun. Hopefully I can get into coaching when I'm like five, ten years. Yeah, coaching yeah. badges will be next year if I can afford them. Yeah, it's all start somewhere. And as I say, you know, the best way to start is voluntary, you know, that, you know, it starts building up things like your CV and now, you know, without getting too, you know, business talk, you know, it's good. You know, it's always something you can use. And, you know, again, 
you know, it, it, it's it's difficult. You know, you've you've got in a situation where you you're dealing with younger children, and I know from <laughs> experience that when they are that age in football, it's like sh- they're like sheep. They're like little sheep. There's the ball, and there they all go with it, like a swarm of bees. <laughs> um, yeah. pretty, pretty much how um, Watford used to play when I first went to Goldfield, <laughs> I think. You know, I, 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 <laughs> that's so. I'm, that's one all now. So you've offended Scotland. Now I've offended Luton and Watford. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> we'll get the whole thing the UK by the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> this is going well. This is going well. <laughs> So um, look, and that that's that's really good and interesting. So you said you want to go into coaching, you want to keep the podcast. So we talked about where the podcast goes, but yeah, go on then. Ultimate dream, where are you going with with what what's your ambition going forward? I would love either the Leeds job or the England job, or I've been playing football manager recently, and the Watford job would be amazing. Yeah, I've they've got so much history, and without offending, they don't have as much trophy as the history, and I think that's kind of an interesting uh, situation. I, I would get the first Premier League title for Watford. That there we go. That's what I'm saying. Okay. I do. I'd get that. That'd be my first job. I'd go to Leeds and then I'd finish off with England. That's that. That's it. That's the career path. Okay. I don't now, know how I'm get, I, I, I want to get Watford first. <laughs> I want to add something because you said earlier before again before we come online that you said you've been playing football manager and we again we spoke before. Big, big yeah. fan of that. Obviously, they've, they've got quite a big Watford connection because I know um, Miles Jacobson, who is yeah. whatever he is, is is the um, is a massive Watford supporter. But you've also you told me that you've got you've had the Watford job on there for seventeen years, which is unheard of in this day and age because we are the sackable yeah. team club. So well done for keeping I, the job. <laughs> when I kept the job, I was surprised I kept the job because without insulting, they do go through a lot. Of, it's like Leeds a few years ago, go through a lot of managers. Um, but I win- I was winning things, so I don't know. We got new owners about five years into it, so which would be when I reckon I'd have got sacked because I was having a bit of a rough start to the season. Um, and I didn't get sacked because I'd won trophies. Champions Leagues as well. Don't worry about that. That's all covered. But yeah, 17 years. It's You can tell we've been in a lockdown. I'm 17 years in. I'm more than that. I'm in 2045. I mean... <laughs> You can tell we've had a lockdown recently. <laughs> I know. You know, if it, if it's kept if it's kept you happy, that's what you want to do. And it's, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's success to Watford, so it'll make me happy in any form. I can take it. That's fine. <laughs> but I had people about football manager on my podcast as well. Zealand, he was really nice. Uh, yeah, football manager, something I talk about a lot because it's uh, it's addictive. <laughs> like it's because um, you want to succeed. It's extremely hard. That's that's my CV. That for getting a management job. <laughs> and again, I think we spoke on your on your last on your podcast when we did we did your one. I said that there was a a team in the UK. I can't remember who it was um, that actually said we will not be accepting CVs despite how well you've done on Football Manager because people were saying, so, "Oh, bossed it." Uh, yeah, I also saw a thing. Apparently, with Middlesbrough, Nottingham Forest, who someone sent their Football Manager CV as a joke. It was on a Football Manager group, and apparently, they responded back saying they're overqualified. <laughs> which I love when they do that. <laughs> yeah, it, it's uh, good to see humour from the clubs, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it's it makes it more it makes it more humour. But that was fun. Uh, someone sent the job application to Spurs when they didn't get anyone working for ages, and I thought it was hilarious. They were taking the mick out of them, saying their max purchase was six hundred grand, but that's obviously a bit more than what they're willing to pay. It <laughs> was hilarious. I loved it. <laughs> it's been cited in divorce cases as well. I found that out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's incredible. So, uh, it's good. Yeah, I, that's great. <laughs> um, so, look, you, you you're busy. You're you're getting what for promoted. You know, you're doing your coaching yeah. in, in 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 real life, as they say. Uh, you're doing yeah. the um the, the podcast. So, um, for for people that are interested in going to find your work, so where do they find your work? Where where can they find you? Where can they find social okay. media? Just just have a little chat. Tell us where we can get you. So all the Facebook pages and Instagram, uh, I don't know what social media we're on. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. We're on anything else, maybe. Search our name on there, the World of Quality Autistic Kid, or on Twitter, it's The Autistic Kid, um, and you'll find us there. The website's theautistickid.com. I'm going to say no caps, but I don't think it really matters. Um, I think I've searched it with caps and I still found the website, so it, it should be, it should work like that. And uh, obviously on Spotify, I don't. I think the only platform for podcasts i'm not on that major is stitcher and i'm not sure if i'm on iheart but i'm working on it um but yeah most platforms most people use spotify or apple you can search me there and it counts towards my stats on anchor as well which is what i used to publish it so yeah people can go find it there 
It's great fun. They're yeah. getting longer recently, your episodes. I'm going to try and trim them down. Like, not if it goes over two hours, I've decided I'm going to cut it into separate episodes, which means it looks like I've done more work. So, <laughs> <laughs> so getting two things with that. <laughs> that's, a, that's a British mentality, isn't it? Look, it looks, yeah. I've done twice as many episodes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've done more work. Yeah, look, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah that, absolutely you're right i don't know what i'd add on to that this is <laughs> weird not leading the conversation i'm not it's you're weird i'm trying not to ask and do all this <laughs> you're, you're doing very well because as i say i know i struggled i don't think i even got five minutes in yours without i was able to ask you a question <laughs> so you've done very well you have done very I think well it helps. i've already interviewed you so i've got all the basis down um <laughs> <laughs> that works but uh look i mean you know it's it's it has been such a great find finding you and finding your your work and again you know i wouldn't be sat here if i didn't see people like you leading the way and again you know as i say again i don't want to sound patronized i don't want to sound it but such a young man i said to you on the end of your podcast you know if i'd have sat there at, at your age and been able to do what you do i'm 20 odd you know what plus years older you know and i'm um, it, it's incredible so you know thank you for that and also thank you for kind of, uh, of for, for people like my son as I say my son's autistic which is why I started yeah. doing the orange a little bit you know to help my kids get understood better in business for helping them helping my children kind of have an outlet as well and to listen to things that might actually resonate them more than me telling you know trying to help them you know it's someone who is living the same but different life, if that's fair again, you know, yeah. I'm able to say that. So, you know, thank you for that. It's really, really important to have people like yourself doing what Thanks you do. Thanks for the praise. It's, um, yeah, it's nice getting praise, I suppose, is the easiest way of putting it. And uh, like I said, though, same but different. Everyone's got their own voice, and that's, like, kind of my key message in it. Just, I, I saw a debate online. Um, who should we trust more, the autistic parents or the autistic adults, I was thinking, why not ask the person they're talking about, like the child, if they can communicate? Mm. So yeah, it's uh, it's fun. Thanks for the praise. It's, I'm enjoying your episode. It's great. Bless you. And again, you you kind of touched it there just before we finish. And uh, the other thing I think is really good with your work is you you kind of challenge that kind of negativity. If you feel that someone's saying you can't say that or ableist and things like that, you're actually yeah. going, well, actually, if they're helping, why not? <laughs> yeah. You know, is that fair yeah. as well? Yeah. Yeah, that's how I see it. I was seeing this thing about the puzzle piece as well, for example. I don't know, was it where you I discussed it? I think we had so, a little bit of a chat, yeah. Yeah, and although I would I would use it, um, if people are trying to help, as long as it's not causing any harm, use it if it's working. Mm -hmm. like, go ahead, it's great. Really? Yeah, thanks. That's that rounds it up, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, I'm that's... trying to be open and not, I don't care what people think is one way of saying it. <laughs> um No, yeah. it, it, it's more than that. It's kind of just being comfortable enough to make sure to, to give your view and to kind of help people accept and understand and grow you know and that's that's it really when you when you just started that sentence you were like that's about it I thought actually you were closing this episode I must admit oh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> when I realized I said that I thought that doesn't sound right I'm not trying to close the episode I could talk for like five hours straight more <laughs> but that, that it was your bit on the, it was your bit to say i'm running this show i'm running this <laughs> <laughs> the inner podcast i can't resist <laughs> well <laughs> <and> subscribe <laughs> <laughs> well honestly dom it's been absolutely brilliant chatting to you and uh, we're going to continue champion. talking because again you know I, I love to champion your work you've been a hell of a fantastic champion for me um, and I thank you so much for coming and, and doing it. Have you got any last words? I will give you the last word. Anything else you want to say to the people <laughs> today that's important to you? Um, yeah, if you want, you can find me. Um, and listen to people. That That's what I'll leave it at, because I've had loads and I've criticised my school for not listening to me, not listening to others. And that wouldn't have happened if they just listened. Life would be much simpler if you just listened and... Uh, it, it is hard because there are sometimes just someone thinking, yeah, you're yeah, pretty stupid there. But just listen, and uh, if they if they are saying something that's wrong, discuss it and don't get angry. You can be passionate about being angry, is how I'm going to put it. So yeah, uh, be kind. <laughs> yeah. Great words, great words, fish on Dom. Thank you so much, and again, thanks for having me. No worries, thanks a lot. So a massive thank you to Dom for coming on the podcast please make sure you go and check out It's the World According to the Autistic Kid. 
It's available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, like he said. Go and have a look and see his work. Now, next week, I will be joined by Walt Hampton. And Walt is trying to get everyone a little bit more time with their families, with their loved ones, and doing what we want to do in life and not being constrained by work and making sure the work that you put in is the best work you can do so you get the time to enjoy when you're not there. That's all for the episode today. All that's left is to hear how you can get in touch with the podcast. For now, goodbye and take care. To get in touch with the podcast, you can find us at insidetheorange.co.uk. You can email us at insidethisorange at gmail.com. You can find us on Twitter at Orange Watts, Orange W H A T S. On Instagram, Inside the Orange. On the Inside the Orange podcast Facebook page. Or you can find me on LinkedIn. It's Richard Stevens, motivational speaker and creator of the Inside the Orange. All these links will be available in the description and show notes.